I'm Al Williams. I wanted to show you one of my latest projects, Altair RFP. A strange name. You might guess that it's an Altair 8800 simulator, and you'd be right. The RFP stands for Remote Front Panel, and that goes to the original purpose of this program, which was to drive a Brio Computer's Micro 8800, which is an Altair 8800 replica. It uses a parallax propeller as a terminal and an Atmel AVR as an 8080 emulator, but there's firmware in the AVR that allows the front panel to be used just as a general I.O. device, and so that's what I'm using in this case, and the software will actually drive the front panel, or it will run standalone, which is what I'm going to show you in this screencast. The code will run under Linux, it'll run under Windows with some limited functionality, or if you've got SigWin, it'll run under Windows and do everything it does under Linux. And a typo there. This is open source and it's on Google's code repositories if you want to download it under Altair-RFP is the project name. If you're using it with a serial port, you give it a port name, you give it a baud rate code, and there's several to choose from, and you can also tell it while it's running not to update the front panel on every cycle, which is important because if you try to do that, it gets very slow when you're running. It's okay to update it on every single step, but it's too slow, so you want to give it like a hundred thousand skips if you're actually running. You can set the RAM size up to 64K, you can tell it to start running automatically, you can tell it to trace automatically, you can give it a character that will let you escape out of the terminal, you can force the terminal to the uppercase, you can load a file all pretty standard stuff. The interesting things are these couple of options here, the dash C, dash E, dash T, dash D, and dash X. You notice they both take either a Telnet port, or all, I should say, take either a Telnet port or a stream. The Telnet ports obviously just open up a server that you can Telnet into on your local computer, or the streams can be a numeric Telnet port or a file name. And so this is actually the console, which the default is actually just the normal console, but you can redirect that to Telnet. You can get an error stream, which can be a file or a Telnet, a trace output, debug, which is actually debugging the emulator, not your running 8080 program. And then there's a control port, and it's a Telnet port, and that's really more like a debugger for your code. So let's see how that works. I'm going to start the program with a control port on 4000. And nothing seems to be happening here and that's because it's actually waiting for me to connect on port 4000 which it just did. And this is more or less a standard debugging kind of interface with a few twists. There's 26 breakpoints A through Z. I'll talk more about those later but the breakpoints are actually pretty sophisticated. You can display some memory. You can show things in hex or octal. Uh, your inputs are by default in the same radix, hex is the default, but you can always override that to decimal, octal, or hex no matter which mode you're in. You can load a file into RAM, of course you can save a file into RAM, you can step, you can look at a single register, set its value, you can look at all the registers, you can run a program, the usual kind of things. So let's look at what we've got here. I have nothing in memory right now because I didn't load anything and I'm sitting here idle waiting for something to do. So let's do a load. This happens to be a file I have that is a 16K basic image loaded with the source code for Star Trek. And so if you look, I certainly have something in there now. And if you notice, I get an OK prompt from basic here and there's the Star Trek source code. If I run that, and sure enough it's Star Trek, a very addicting game if you're my age and played on computers of this uh, era. Now this window over here is live, so if you notice it's sitting here running in a pretty tight input loop which I have, okay, 556, five, I have to be synchronizing on it, but it goes from about 556 five, to 55A. Five, five, so let's put a breakpoint in, 
and I'll ask for help on the breakpoints. Like I said, there's 26 breakpoints, A through Z. You can set a target, and the target can be an address, a memory address, or it can be a register, including program counter. And you can say, well, if that's equal to this value, that's a breakpoint. And you can also and a mask with it, so you can just look at certain bits if you want. You can also set a target when it changes, again, anded with a mask optionally. Normally, the breakpoints will stop if they hit, but you can set them to trace and continue. You can also set them to enable or disable a breakpoint, either the same breakpoint or a different breakpoint. You can set a count. Of course, you can turn them on and off. You can set them to only happen once. You can resume from a breakpoint, although you normally wouldn't do that. And you can also list out either one breakpoint or all 26. So let's say breakpoint A set PC 055A. And sure enough, it hit just to show that uh, that's what the breakpoint looks like. If the PC ended with FFFF is 555A, then we stop. <clears throat> and in fact, that's what we did. So I can resume that, although obviously it's just going to hit it again. So let's say the breakpoint A is off. And now when we resume, it'll just continue. And in fact, we're running Star Trek. So we can go kill Klingons. Like I said, this is open source. It's on Google Code under Altair-RFP. If you're interested in the Micro 8800, which I have no association with other than being a customer and having worked a little bit on the firmware uh, since it's kind of open also, uh, is at brielcomputers.com. My websites are many, including hotsolder.com and awce.com. So anyway, hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoy the Altair Simulator.